Let me first introduce you about water. Water is a liquid crystal and it has many phases. What do we mean with many phases? Uh, it is not stable in a crystal form. It is dynamic. But the power of this is so immense that uh, nobody in the world has any understanding what makes that crystal form. What is that level of almost a kind of, call it maybe even kind of consciousness or awareness in water that it has the ability to create in a flash of a second so many types of crystal forms. The only problem is, and that is one of the concerns that I will show you during this presentation, but I also will come up with a solution. But one of the concerns I have is that water is losing that capacity. And that is due to human behavior. And I will show you in this presentation what it all means. I first wanted to show you some of the situations and you discussed it, Stuart, about the environmental problems in the world. And you said water is one of the key problems in that area. And this picture shows you one of those very, very critical elements that we hardly see as a discussion coming back in all kinds of meetings all over the world. These are the currents of cold and hot water all over the world. And it is very critical. These currents, they play a major role in our climate. If these currents are changing, our climate will change dramatically. And water has to cool off. And the only two places where that can take place is on the North and on the South Pole. So on the North and the South Pole, it comes up and then it goes down very deep. And then you have a specific current. If these currents are changing, then it means that on certain places like India or in Africa, it might not rain at all, or you get floods. Nobody can predict what the effects are if the pole and the ice on the pole is melting and it is melting dramatic fast at the moment. So this will have an effect on our climate and nobody can really predict what the outcome is. So water, even if it is also increasing in temperature for two degrees has also a completely different effect on biological systems. Take for instance, your own body. If your body is heating up at two degrees, it feels like a fever. And it means that your enzymes and all the other very critical positions in your body are changing. This will also happen with Mother Earth. It means you get new bacteria and all kinds of new things. And that is something I never hear coming back into the environmental discussions that we have all over the world. But you started to talk about it, Stuart, that water plays a role in the climate change. And yes, that's absolutely the case. Talking about the supercomputer, most of my life I worked in the IT area. And then you do know that you, you work with a memory and you bring in a program and you get an output. And what you bring in is what you get out. That is also something we start to forget with water. Water is one of those specific materials in the world that has the ability to collect all kinds of electromagnetic waves. I'll give you two examples of that. One of them is on the right side. That is the moon, whereby we have in the world low and high tide through the oceans. And that means that the oceans are constantly moving. The water is moving all over the world. That's important. And on the left side, you see the sun. And that is very critical because if water cannot absorb those electromagnetic waves, then this planet will be completely frozen. Due to the fact that water can absorb the sun rays means that it can give a certain temperature to this climate and it can keep it stable. But if you are going to increase the water in the world, it will change the climate 
you get a completely different frequency all over the world. But water doesn't only absorb the electromagnetic fields of the sun and the moon, but it can absorb almost any electromagnetic field. And that is one of the things that we ignore completely. We are not aware of that. But that is having an effect upon this supercomputer because one of those very important things is that if you are going to make a program or water and you bring in the wrong electromagnetic fields, then you also get it into your output. And I'll show you the details on that later on. These are the movements of the atoms. And a lot of you are very familiar with the movements of these atoms. And the most important thing is the next sheet, because here you see those movements coming back. And such of you already mentioned it, the coherent state. On the left side, we have the chaotic state. That means the atoms don't cooperate. And on the right side, you have a coherent state. The coherent state, and that is calculated by quantum physics, have much more energy. And it almost works like a Roman legion. It unites, it works together. And then it has a certain energy layer, and then it can do its work. And then it has a completely different type of energy. So the coherent state is a very critical state. And every doctor knows that also our body can only function if it is working in a coherent state. It must work together. And on the right side, you can create the intelligence. On the left side, you have speakers that speak English, Russian, Japanese, all through each other, no communication. On the right side, you have a unity. And this is very, very important. Can you create a coherent state in water? A lot of people talk about it upon these coherent states. But to keep it coherent, that is the issue. Because there are a lot of products in the market that create a coherent state. But if you measure it in your laboratory, most of them lose that capacity already within a few minutes. And an hour is most of the time the max. And all the things that I'm going to show you and all the tests that I'm going to show you during this presentation is done with water that is at least two or three months old. So that's the difference between a real coherent state and a temporary coherent state. Water is made to connect and to communicate with the cosmos, with the sun and the moon and this planet Earth. And all the programming done in this supercomputer is done with these electromagnetic waves. The, it's very, very subtle energy, and that creates the balance in water. And water also needs a recovery time in this, on this planet. If it is going by rain in a river and it is going through the soil, then it needs certain time frame and then it comes back to the river. It has a complete cycle whereby it can recover and pick up certain energy layers. And then it creates the right atomic resonance. And then it can create the crystalline structures. And as you can see here, this is a unity. And this is a kind of a computer program because each crystal form has the ability to communicate with the outside world. And if you have a certain type of communication in the water and you drink it into your, you, you take it, and it will have a very serious effect immediately onto your body. And we have done multiple tests on that. And we, most of the time we did tests on plants and in the soil, I'll come back to that. One of the things, is that water is seen in many places as holy. And that's correct because water makes the communication possible with the cosmos. We baptize people with water. And there's a very good reason for that. And the picture you see now is the Kumbhela. 
And we had the honor to be with Sachifi two years ago on the last school mela in India, together with Punja Swamiji. And then you see millions of people going into this holy river. And why is that? And that's exactly what I just showed you. The Kumbh Mela can only take place when there is a certain connection between the planets, the sun, the moon, and Jupiter on a specific date in a specific time frame. And then water creates immediately a specific kind of dynamic crystalline form into the water. And if you are going to swim into the water or take that water, then immediately it has an effect on you. And in this case, it is fantastic to see so many people really working and not only, but they really love this water at that moment of time. And that is in your life, something you will never forget. A lot of people think that we are 70% water. That is not completely true. That is the weight into your body. 70% of your body weight is water. But in reality, 99% of all the molecules in your body are water molecules, while the oceans are 97 to 98%. The rest is salt and minerals. This is very important to understand. That means that water is one of the major and most important molecules into your body. And we also have to be aware that the water molecule is completely surrounding our DNA as well. And what we have found is that specific vibrations into the water and that they can come in via light or other electromagnetic waves, they can influence your DNA. But it also means that it can go two ways. It can go in a positive way, but also in a negative way. So our whole DNA string and our whole water molecule is playing a connection. They, they are connected to each other. This is something typically for, uh, for the doctors in our group. So I uh, move on. One of the things that has played a role and that is going to play a role also in the environmental world, and I can tell you a little bit about it, is we have a very, very big problem with the CO2. CO2 is too much in the air and we broke the complete CO2 cycle and that creates a part of the environmental problem in the world. We found out, and especially in the US and California, they work on that, and we are going to cooperate with them. We found out that it has very much to do with the bacteria and the fungi that are into the soil. The bacteria and the fungi in the soil, they have the ability via plants to absorb the CO2 and get it out of the air and bring it back into the soil. Everybody in the world is talking about reducing the CO2 by not bringing so much CO2 in the air, but the CO2 remains in the air. So we have to bring it back where it belongs and it belongs into the soil so that it can help the growth of plants. And these bacteria and fungi, they play a major role. We should not forget that also in our body, we have many, many types of microbiome and bacteria, and they play a role in our life as well. Without them, and especially nowadays when we talk about immune systems, these bacteria play a major role. These bacteria are coming from the soil. So the food we eat, and especially the vegetables, they have the ability to collect those bacteria, and then you absorb them. But if we kill them throughout the world, then our immune system also goes down. But the same is taking place in the oceans. And the same is also taking place in the rivers. So this whole cycle of water has a great meaning. And what we have seen is that if you create chaotic water, and that is what we call water without any information system, then modern nature has a huge problem 
to turn back that normal cycle. Also, from another point of view, and then we talk about our consciousness, there is a deep connection between the fire element and the water element in our body. And also there, we need to have the right water into our body. This is one of the concerns that we have at this moment of time. We see rainwater and rainwater is coming onto the soil where we grow our vegetables. But at this moment of time, we do know that there are a lot of toxins used in the agriculture. What is happening is that we reprogram the water in its crystalline form in such a way that it can take over the energy layers of these toxins. And we think that we can cleanse then the water chemically, but we forget that the structure of the crystalline form in the water remains in its old state. And then on top of that, we see that this water is coming down, it is coming into the groundwater, and then we are going to drink that water later on. And that will have a serious effect. So you can take out the chemicals but you don't take out the energy layers that have put in. So what we are doing at the moment is that we are breaking down in a terrible way this complete cycle of the water structure. And one of the other concerns, and that is hardly discussed also in the world, is the effect of this, the effect of satellites. We forget that satellites, and especially if we are going to send out more than 50,000 satellites in the world, that is going to beam 4 and 5G radiation to the world. And that is an electromagnetic field. And I just told you that water absorbs electromagnetic fields. And it can hold that energy and it creates a crystalline form. And those frequencies are very harmful. If they are going to beam this 4 and 5G radiation through the clouds, then the clouds that should give us rain are affected already. And then that rain is coming back onto the soil. A huge effect. We have done already multiple tests in this area. And I will show you the test later on during this presentation. But we are creating a problem here. And we are creating with the toxins a problem here. And uh, such of you already told us that our meat consumption is much too high. And that means that we are running in not only in a water problem, but also in a food problem. In our laboratory for 40 years, we tried to find out how can we create a crystalline form that has a certain stability. And we call that full spectrum water. Why full spectrum? What we have seen is that the water at this moment of time is limited in, absorb in, in, the, in the absorption of all the information system in it. Here I give you some examples. Here's the root of a plant. Left side is with normal water, and the right side is, you see immediately the fungi around the root, is with this coherent water. But this was very interesting one, this test. I'm going to show you this test and I'm going to give you the information around it. On the left side, you see tap water. On the right side, we use the same tap water, what we make it, what, but we made it coherent. And on the very right side, on top, you see the seeds. We gave seeds these two types of waters, the normal tap water and the same tap water after making it coherent. And then after many, many weeks doing tests, we got two graphs, the red graph and the blue graph. And we didn't know what does it mean. Then we found out that there is another rhythm in modern nature, and that is the yellow one. And the yellow one is the high and low tide of the moon. And what we see now is that even if you have very good tap water, then it doesn't follow the moon anymore. But our whole body and our whole system is very much dependent upon the cycles of the planets as well. 
The sun and the moon are very critical for us. And what we have seen is that if you make it coherent again, then here you have the top, here you have a top, here you have the bottom, here you have the bottom, here you have the top, here you have the top. And the red one, hardly is following these lines. That means that water is constantly following the cycles of the moon as well. And I come back to that. We did multiple studies. Here you see a few studies on plants because that was very easy to do. And what we have seen in the outcome is that if you have the full spectrum water, and you give these tomato plants, a huge number of plants, we give them our water and you compare them, then we saw that the light in the biophotons was two to three times as high. It has much more energy. And we sometimes forget that when we eat food, we also eat light in the structure of the food. A lot of people that compare organic food with standard food, they compare only the chemicals, but they don't compare the light and they don't compare the quality of the food. It goes much deeper than that. And what we saw is that the mitochondria were increasing dramatically. And the mitochondria play a major role because they create the ATP. And for those of us who are not familiar with ATP, ATP is your direct energy source into your body. Every second, every second in your body, you create ATP. Without ATP, you die. And only by giving water, those vegetables created two to three times more ATP. And it has the same effect on humans. Then we look to the microbiome. And the microbiome play a critical role in our resistance of the body. And we looked to the soil and what we found out is that the microbiome increased seven to eight times. And this is not one test, this is multiple tests. Constantly we came back to this average. So what it shows is that the bacteria and the fungi into the soil, they immediately recognize the effect of water and they have the ability to change this whole soil in a much better way. Then we did a similar test on polluted soil. And after three, four months, we recognized that the pollution here was taken out. And we are doing now multiple tests this again, because we think that we can do the same in rivers, polluted rivers, so that they can cleanse themselves in a much faster way. And that is one of the reasons that we are also very interested in working together with people in India, whereby there is a lot of pollution in the rivers. But I come back to that and I'll show you the test that we have done. We also did research uh, on the seeds and what we have seen, I don't know if you see it here, but this is, here you see the light of biophotons. You see up light and that is like a dance. And we measured that if you give it the right water, then the seeds in the soil immediately are going to emit much more light. And it is really amazing to see in a laboratory that if you give seeds water, then immediately you see an explosion of biophotons. And it was a serious improvement over there. This test is very important. I'm going to give you a little bit of detail upon it. We built our own systems over the last few years with uh, people from the university in Eindhoven, that is uh, Philips area. And this is the water that, that we made coherent. And that is very interesting. Here, you see this energy. That is the energy that comes in via the sun. And if it absorbs it well, then you get exactly the same line over here. And that is the energy that brings that energy that is getting in from the sun into the soil. This is 
water imbalance. And it is amazing to see that the computer systems that you see over here constantly recognize this water. And that is the water that we have made coherent after many years of research. And what you see here is the time, and this is the energy. Energy measured in microfolders. Amazing to see that this is the effect on all the plants that we measured. And here you see the, the, the plants that we measured with this equipment with new moon. You see really an explosion of energy in water and in plants with new moon. And the highest energy in a plant was measured if you made, if you made it coherent. It is really very important to see that the moon cycle plays a major role into water as well. And we are now having the equipment, we do have now the equipment to measure that. Um, here you see a polluted ditch. This is the polluted water over here. And this takes a few days. After a few days, it looks like this. But the atomic structure was chaotic, like you see here below. And we started to measure with our equipment, what is the type of energy in this plant? And we did, we put the water on the plants, as you can see here, normally here, you have all these plants. And uh, why was this important? Well, a lot of farmers in the world, also in India, they use water from rivers. And we wanted to see what is the effect upon our food cycle. So we measured the plant every second, and we brought it to a data center seven times 24 hours and we measured it for months. So every plant has a connection here with a computer system and then it was sent to a big computer system and we try to measure the effects of water. This is when we switch the computer on and this is the energy layer of a plant. Very interesting is that you see no connection between this level, the high level and the low level. The low level means that it can hardly bring energy to the root of the plant and to the soil. It hardly had any effect upon the bacterial life into the plant. And then we were wondering what is the current status of water in the world anyway? because this is how it should be when you make it coherent. Here you see already the beautiful line here, exactly a copy here, then it is coherent. What we found out is first of all, you, and that is what you see quite often now, a lot of people use vortexes in the world or they bring in frequencies. And what we see is that if you do that, you can sometimes get a peak here, but it never, says that you also have a peak here. This, very often there is no balance. This is, by the way, mineral water that we measured all, all over the world. And we thought that mineral water is much better. But also here we see that water all over the world is losing its capacity to connect itself with the sun and the moon in the right order. Then we did something very special. We looked to the polluted water and we were wondering, can we make that polluted water coherent again? So we used our equipment and what we saw immediately within a few minutes is we were able to bring back the sun in a few minutes time. And a few days later, we saw the same effect later on coming here. So what we did is that we, we used our equipment to make it more coherent and immediately we could see the effects upon the plants. How did we do this? Well, this is our coherent water. And in a very specific way, we knew that there was a certain coherence here, and this was the ditch with the ditch water, a lot of chaos. And we were able to bring in a very specific way with our equipment 
to copy that energy from the coherent water into the ditch water. And then finally, we could measure that the ditch water became more coherent. Then there is still the chemical pollution, still there, but the change in the water goes much faster than normally. This is something else because the water molecules are very light molecules. And in our body, as I told you, we are 99% water molecule and 1% are heavy molecules. But suppose that the water is more coherent. What does it mean for the other molecules? Well, here you see an example. This is the coherent water, the same brick. So what, what was the big surprise for the brick factory because they used all kinds of water all over the world. They thought that all waters were the same. We made that water that they used more coherent. And surprise, surprise, the stone became lighter, stronger, and better. So it was able to modify the structure of the heavy molecules. And you can imagine that the same can take place in your own body, because we have seen more or less exactly the same into plants. It also means that you need less water. And that was also here, the situation. So suppose that we have certain places in the world whereby they really need water, then if you can make the water coherent, then you need simply less water. It has a huge effect on the environment. All of the tests that we've done is together with the International Water Institute, WETSIS, which is an international institute and they prove that what we are doing is done in the right way. And what we try to do with our research and with all the work we do in our team is we want to bring back a normal cycle of water in the world and to protect ourselves again against harmful radiation and that modern nature can come back in its real force. That is our objective. Um, here you see the research areas whereby we uh, are growing with tomatoes and we use rainwater. We use very often polluted water or rainwater. And we wanted to, to show that to farmers so that they can use the, the water that they have uh, locally and make it coherent. Here again, you see the coherent phases, the beautiful coherent phases when the rainwater this is rainwater here. Hardly any energy. And this is when it is made coherent in a very specific way. Beautiful, what we call yin and yang, positive and negative energy, completely in balance. And we used it, we used many types of water. And what we see is that most water in the world, even if you bring in certain frequencies or other things, you never get that stability. Real coherence means that the water itself, the computer itself, knows what to do with modern nature. We very often want to bring in frequencies or other things. We found out that the more you do that, the, the more damage you can create on the long term. Temporary, sometimes it works. But in the long run, we have seen that if you have these types of lines, these beautiful lines, then you create the stability and modern nature is much more intelligent than we are and they know what to do. That is why I'm very nervous when people are starting to work with frequencies. One of the other tests, and that is again another test is on the electromagnetic fields in the world. 
is that we create around this world a complete new electromagnetic wave based upon telco waves. And we hardly recognize the effects. And it's very strange because in the telco world, they say it will not harm you because it doesn't heat up your brain if you put a mobile phone against your head. But it has nothing to do with heating up your brain. It has to do with the effect upon water. I'm going to show you here the effects. This is a four and 5G tower. And this is the energy that we measure in plants with our equipment. This is a healthy plant, sick plant, dead plant. And what we did is the following. We took simply rainwater and we put in a 5G antenna. And we did also the same with a 4G antenna, by the way. And we put it in for only one hour. And then we measured the effect upon water in the plants for three weeks. And this is what happened with normal rainwater. After 21 days, we did a test and this was the effect. We could hardly measure any energy anymore. For me, that was a serious shock because we are planning to bring in 50,000 satellites in the world. And we already have a huge number of antennas all over the world. We did the same test with coherent water. This is the effect. It was affected and then it came back. In its full energy again. So for us, that was a very, very serious test. And at this moment of time, we are doing a lot of these tests. And uh, we uh, are going to do this test uh, with, uh, with some international laboratories because the same test was done in the International Water Institute. And they found out that when they're going to beam this 5G radiation to water, they is noticed that the biological systems of the bacteria was changing dramatically in a negative way. So then we did an effect on brain waves. The yellow line is the average of a healthy person. And here you see the brain waves that is in Hertz between zero and 60 Hertz, that is where our brain functions, depending if you are in sleep state, deep sleep, meditation, or working hard, reading, writing, all those things have an effect. So we went to an organization that measured these brain waves like this. And blue and red, it means that it is not in balance, and green is in balance. With coherent water, we noticed that the brains were coming, were coming back into the green area very fast. Red is much, much too much energy in the brain. And this is what happened with the mobile phone when you phone for two minutes. And why the brain? The brain is one of the body parts that is almost completely water. The water in the lungs, are those parts in the body that have most of the water. And this is the effect. The other effect is then we gave it our water, our coherent water, and then we saw that it was green again. We also noticed that those people who have a brain problem like Alzheimer, and Alzheimer and Parkinson disease are increasing dramatically all over the world, that we saw that it had a big problem in this area of the brain. And the white line is average, is normal. And here you see again that when you drink water, like a glass that we have all in front of us, and it is coherent, then immediately you see the positive effect upon your brain. So it has a huge impact also on our consciousness. We did the same with other people. 
And uh, depending upon your resistance level and in your age, we noticed that it has a different effect. What is this showing? This shows again that water is constantly responding to electromagnetic waves. And the state of coherence is very critical in that. Uh, at this moment of time, we are doing some tests also with DNA. And unfortunately, I cannot give you the outcome yet, but I can tell you that the first outcome is absolutely interesting. But we did a test on something else in London. We asked 20 people to use coherent water for three months. And we did a urine and blood test before and after. And it was what we called a glycanage test. Glycanates are enzymes into the body and they have a very serious effect on aging. And the laboratory called us later on. They said, what did you do? Well, we only gave them for three months coherent water, two to three glasses a day, no more. Because the outcome was really surprising. The average age of the, twimple, the, of the people who drank the water, and the age was between 20 and 77 years, the average age was that they became five years younger. And we are going to do the same test now in India with more than 100 people, uh, because this is such an amazing effect. And we also noticed that if you drink coherent water, then it also boosts up your immune system. And especially nowadays, that has an effect. So what do we see at the end? Water plays a role with bacteria and fungi in the soil, in the vegetables. It plays a role in our whole body. It plays a role in our consciousness. It has an effect upon the way our own computer system works. And we call it full spectrum coherent water. Why? Because it is very important that we keep our connection with the planets in the right order. And that is more or less a part of the conclusion that I wanted to show you. Because all life is dependent on normal natural magnetic waves. But we are now heavily influenced by man-made waves. And we have to protect our water for more than one reason. And the energetic pollution of the water has a deep negative effect on humans as well. We talk about clean water. And such a V started with it. And that is absolutely true. We have to keep the water clean. But clean also means in an energetic point of view. And if you make it really full spectrum coherent, then you can structure it in such a way that Mother Earth really knows how to work with that. And we think that with our water, we can solve a great part of these problems. And that is how I wanted to end this presentation.